But today we want to take a look at uh, four questions and then three very positive statements. The first question is, why was Thomas not in the first upper room meeting after the resurrection? Why was Thomas not in the upper room after the first, uh, at the first meeting in the upper room? Why was he not there after the crucifixion? Question number two is, how was he any less believing than the other apostles? How was Thomas any less believing than the other apostles? Number three, why was the second meeting eight days later after the crucifixion? Why was the second meeting in the upper room eight days later? What were they doing all of that time? What was the second meeting? Why was it eight days later? And final question, Jesus proved to the ten in the first upper room meeting. Why did he come back and prove to Thomas in the second upper room meeting? Why did Jesus prove to the ten on the first upper room meeting uh, that he had risen from the dead? And why did he have to come back a second time to the upper room to prove to Thomas? Well, let's take a look at Scripture, John chapter 20, verses 24 through 29. John chapter 20, verses 24 through 29. Let me read them to you right now. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples were saying to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see his hands and the imprints of the nails, and put my fingers into the place of the nails, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. After eight days, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas with them. Jesus came to the, came, the door, having been shut, and stood in their midst, and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Reach here with your fingers, and see my hands. Reach here with your hand, and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who did not see, yet believe. So now let's answer those questions. Why was Thomas not in the first meeting? We don't know. I mean, some have speculated that he was fearful. Uh, some have speculated that he was in disbelief and didn't see any point in continuing with the other apostles. Uh, some have said that uh, uh, perhaps he had some emergency or some other uh, uh, situation that was not as important as meeting with the other apostles. It, it doesn't really matter why he wasn't there. He wasn't there. The second question was, uh, how is it that he was less believing? Well, <laughs> you, you really can't blame Thomas and call him Doubting Thomas. After all, Peter had seen Jesus risen. The ladies had seen Jesus risen, but Thomas hadn't. <laughs> and then next we take a look at the fact that uh, even though Thomas wasn't believing, uh, the upper room a week earlier uh, Jesus had appeared to the other apostles and showed him his nail-scarred hands and his feet and had been with them. Uh, Thomas didn't have that privilege of seeing those things. And, and no wonder he used that phrase when he said, unless I see it, I'm not going to believe. So we, we see that he really wasn't less believing. He just liked to have the same proof that the others had. Uh, and then we have the third question. Why was the second meeting eight days later? Well, remember, this is the feast season. And it started out with uh, the, the uh, special festivals and uh, then the Passover. And it continued for seven days. So this would have been uh, a time when the disciples or apostles would have continued to follow the practices of this holy week. And so they stayed in Jerusalem for this week. Uh, and they stayed and practiced all of the things that would go on during this Jewish uh, uh, holiday and festival. And so it was a week later 
uh, when uh, they had their second meeting, perhaps to talk about going to Galilee, perhaps to just review the things that had happened that week. We don't know because not all things are recorded in the scriptures for us. The fourth question was, why did Jesus come back uh, a second time into the upper room eight days later just for Thomas? I mean, he had already proved to the other disciples by showing him his hands and his feet. And here's the most important thing, the four things that I want to be sure you get out of this. Thomas said, my Lord and my God. When Thomas saw that Jesus was a risen Savior, he accepted him into his heart as his Lord and into his life as his God. And that's what every one of us need to do. Secondly, uh, you'll notice in verse 29, he professed. And, and uh, it's very, very important uh, that when he did, Jesus said, Blessed are you because you have seen but more blessed are those who believed without seeing. Do you believe? Did you see that Jesus lived, died, and rose again? I think it's very important for us to take a step back for just a second. I doubt if there are very many people in this entire world right now who don't believe there is such a thing as COVID-19 a virus going around and killing people. But we can't see it. It's an unseen enemy. And yet we all believe it. We believe it because we see the results of it. And I submit to you today, and I want you to listen carefully, that although we can't see Jesus, we see the results of him all over the world not bad results like the virus, but good results. Lives changed. Drunkards that become sober. People that are addicted to all kinds of things, leaving that addiction. People who normally under a natural man's status would be selfish and self-centered, who've become giving and loving and kind through Jesus Christ. You believe in the virus? Why not believe in Jesus? There's certainly more evidence of Jesus, even though he's not seen, than there is of the virus. And certainly a lot more results. I mean, after all, even if we were to take all of the known cases of the virus and compare with that with all of the known believers in Jesus and lives that have been changed, we have more evidence of a living Savior than we do of a virus. We know the virus is real. My friends, you ought to know that Jesus is real. And you ought to cry out to him, forgive me of my sins. Come into my life and be, as Thomas said, my Lord in my heart and my God in my life. Yes, that's my thought for the day. How about yours? Mm -hmm.